Welcome back. So first up, I took some of this rectangle tube here to create a bracket to hold the end of that cable. Couldn't really find anything um, that was suitable shopping around, you know, from the auto places and even online. Um, so I thought, oh, I'll just create something and then I can create exactly what I want. So I just put that bolt there just to represent the cable, which is the same diameter, half inch, oh, sorry, quarter inch. So I created those two little brackets there and I'm going to drill uh, two holes through those so they line up and uh, use these 8L clamps here and I can mount that to the actual uh, fittings themselves and this is what it, um, it's going to look like so there's the um, valve and there's the 8L clamps and the other clamp so it's going to mount on there and the hose will go through or the end of that um, you know um, cable will go through my clamp there and then the cable inside itself will just get hooked over onto the end of the swing arm there for the valve so that's uh, the game plan and that way it's sort of mounted doubly um, so you know two points of failure not that that bolt those bolts would fail but anyway um, this is what it looks like so I set my camera up remotely so I could go in the cabin there and um, and you know pull the handle so right now it's in the flowing condition so engine running fuel flowing and when I pull the thing it closes the valve off and push it back the other way it opens it back up again so uh, and I've got the um, the inside uh, rod there just sort of bent to go through that lever and with a couple of locking things on there so the next thing to do is just paint those brackets um, just painted them just in some gloss black um, the usual rattle can stuff just so they won't rust because that's 4130 and when I get a chance I'll get that installed again all right, so all my uh, metal arrived on um, late Monday afternoon. So now this is Tuesday today up at Brett's and actually got the prototype or at least part of it sort of already put together now. I didn't take any video of putting it together because I wanted to just, you know, knock it out as quickly as I could and taking video just slows me down. So, but I'll get some video of the assembly of it and when I do the other one. Uh, but as you can see, I've got my... Um, my square tube running in there in between the bearings and I've you know made the thing and I've got the adjusters in there and for adjusting the tension and everything like that and it runs smooth and you can you know you can dial in the amount of pretension that you want on it and uh, you see I've got it clamped in the vise there so it's clamped on the actual bracket not on the square tube and now just with um, you know this crescent wrench on there I'm cranking on there as hard as I can um, in the anti-clockwise direction so you know pulling towards myself there and there's no flex at all in the whole thing and the, the bearings don't move or anything like that the only thing you end up seeing and if you can look there closely I'll sort of zoom in on it when you push on it as hard as you can you get like a little indentation there in the railing um, and this is the 6061 T6 aluminum but what's interesting is because of the shape of those rollers even the indentation in there doesn't affect how it runs after the fact because the rollers sort of um, run on the flat surface there and that the little indentation ends up being in the very um, sort of um, top edge of of the square tube there so it doesn't actually have any effect and the other thing is you can see there I'm, I'm cranking on it right now putting I don't know probably 20 pounds of pressure on it sideways and I'm able to roll it back and forth um, without any problem so as expected because you know Sirius does the same thing um, it's working just the way I thought and uh, I'm not going to need those um, additional set of rollers in there and I'm, I don't think I'm even going to need those little safety brackets that I put in there because it doesn't move at all when you do that and all you do is get that little dent in there and I'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute uh, but anyway I just wanted to show you two here's um, just a temporary bolt it's way longer than it needs to be for the adjustment uh, on the one end and as you can see so I threaded that hole that it's in there so I can adjust it and it pushes up against that bolt and uh, I turn the flash on here and you look there on the right hand side of where that bolts going through you can see that um, using the bridge port there I've actually slotted that hole so um, you know I can adjust the tension on there and right now there's still quite a lot of room there to adjust it uh, tighter but anyway it doesn't really need it at this point uh, and the other side has the same uh, setup so that all worked out you know 
as usual and you know just if anything when you copy something from how someone else has done it generally if you do a good job it should work just the way they've got it working so anyway um, it does work and uh, let me go over it a little bit more in the CAD and uh, talk about what I'm going to do still okay so just to refresh your memory a little bit this is what I had for the complete design in the CAD and uh, let me um, hide these other brackets that I'm not going to need anymore and you know these this other setup here and uh, then we'll come back and uh, discuss exactly what I still have to do. All right, so this is what we're left with now, just the one set of uh, bearings here and uh, over here. And as I said before, these, uh, because there's just no way for me to put enough pressure on that stick to even get this thing to close to coming out of those rollers there, uh, these guys don't really need to be there. Um, so they're gonna go away as well, just simplify everything. Um, yeah, it just makes it is going to make it quicker for me to get this all assembled as well. Because I mean, essentially, I've got this part now, and this part. So we need to uh, cut these brackets here, and this bracket there, and these other little small brackets, and then um, you know make these FR4 pieces that the bearings that the regular ball bearings sit in, and then the interface these little flange bits here, which I'll show you uh, in a minute those still have to be made that that's going to have to be made on the lathe I've got the material already to do that but uh, that's basically what it breaks down to and then of course this cap needs to be made which is not a big deal and I don't know if you might have noticed I've actually scaled this thing down a little bit there was a one and a half inch diameter I've scaled it back to uh, one and a quarter I think it just that's all it needs really um, and it's uh, it just looks you know a bit more slim and not quite so bulky so essentially this is what we're what we're left with and the one question remains is uh, you know how durable is that 6061 square tube going to be so uh, yeah, here, here are my thoughts uh, on that alright so given that that tube isn't going to twist um, there's just no way the, the thickness that I have in the 6061 it's not going to twist the only thing we're really going to potentially see is those little indentations put in there any time that you really crank on it hard like if you pushed it to the stop and then um, just kept pushing on there you're going to get that slight little indentation that I showed you um, before and as I said it doesn't affect the smoothness of its rolling so it doesn't like create a dent that when you roll past it the next time you feel it because um, the dent gets created right in the top edge there and the roller is running along the flat face and so it, it doesn't actually feel where the dent is because most of the um, area is not affected uh, where the roller where that face you know these faces of the roller are running along um, it doesn't affect it I mean ideally it'd be nice to have some rollers that were wider it wouldn't create um, that dent so much but I really don't think it would make that much difference to tell you the truth because the dent is created right on the edge there and not like you know it's not using the whole face here it's just using the last little part uh, anyway so the options are just you know to stick with it um, with a 6061 and you know just get a couple of extra pieces of this and because it's just a you know square tube with a couple of holes in either end you two holes in this end and one hole actually another hole there to let the cable out in this end changing it out is really not a big deal um, it doesn't require you know any sort of welding or anything fancy it's just basically you know replace that that square tube with some with a new one with some holes drilled in the end in the appropriate places and the other thing I can do which I'm going to do is uh, see if I can source the same square tube in uh, 7075 aluminum which is again even harder um, less chance of that happening and finally uh, the other option might be to see uh, if the cirrus side sticks just the stick itself I'm not sure how they make theirs, but potentially theirs is out of 7075 and it's, you know, gun drilled down the middle. Potentially I could see if I could source and just pick up a couple of those used or even find, um, see if I can get a hold of the vendor, whoever makes those, and see if I can just grab a couple of, um, of the sticks from them um, and, and see, you know. But uh, either way, this uh, solution with the 6061 is in my opinion serviceable um, it's going to work fine and it's not going to twist or anything like that um, and it's not going to skip out of those rollers so I'm happy with just to keep going ahead with it the way it is right now and then uh, you know 
if I need to fall back onto one of these other plans, I will. But in the meantime, I'll start looking to see if I can source it out of 7075 or uh, see if I can get a um, couple of the Cirrus sticks, provided that they're that they're long enough. They should be about the same length, but I'll have to have to see if that's the case. Uh, if anybody has any ideas on uh, on that or any other suggestions, again, it needs to be a hollow tube. Uh, I could do it out of steel, but then that would require sort of gun drilling the whole thing, and I don't think it's necessary. Um, so I'm going to keep going ahead with this. The rest of the week, I'll be up at Brits and and uh, you know on the lathe doing these other different parts and cutting these bits out and. You know, get everything is sorted out and you know do both of them basically um, you know, at least get all the parts done and then I can come back and start installing one of them so that's the update for the first half of this week thanks again for tuning in and uh, tune in again next time and see what I've uh, got for you